Hi, this is Lisa from Monarch Butterfly. I'm talking about um, something I've been studying a lot about uh, when it comes to, to terms of health of the environment, uh, health of pollinators and habitat builders and all life and all uh, plant life and soil. Um, our planet has a lot of salt as opposed to fresh water. Fresh water was like 3% of the water. It's supposed to be 50% with 50% um, I guess salinity, 50% alkalinity, which is fresh water. And in studying um, more about the salt content on the planet, which is very dehydrational, and it also absorbs a lot of heat, is why maybe the oceans are getting hotter and the temperatures are rising. It's because salt absorbs um, uh, heat for some reason. It, it seems like it's flammable. And when you analyze salt in the water, it's sort of like a compound of different things. It's partially what they call column, and it's partially called phosphorus and it has other dirt in it because it absorbs salt is is dehydrating so when things go in the ocean that are like pollution from say our water cycle being full of the human waste which is also another topic um salt can absorb into it um a lot of the pollution so um when you eat salt or even sea salt it's really filthy and dirty and um, it's not a good thing to have salt really in anything and if there are ways to sterilize water like through boiling it it probably is a good idea or through a chemical process where you would say heat or cool or put a bottle of water say from the ocean to test it and then heat it or cool it or heat it and then at the same time turn it in a clockwise motion and then try and isolate all the different chem chemicals within say uh the salt and see what comes up and through heating and cooling it separates out the uh different chemicals and then you could um uh, turn it through heating and cooling uh, cleanse out maybe some of the things through heating and cooling or some of the filthy parts of it can be would become sort of those uh, called crystals and rock and then they go back to the earth to uh, slowly become cleansed out through the process of just um, regeneration and uh, like as part of the earth and it would be good for scientists to take water and analyze the salt itself, the pieces of salt. I feel like they're made of maybe they, something that in the human body is called calcification. When people get cancer, it's because I think uh, the salt content has uh, phosphorus in it, which we're not supposed to eat. That's like a rock. And you're not supposed to eat things that are like below the ground. Um, the cows, the, the callum, which is sort of like calcium, which comes from dairy, is above the ground and we can eat that. But the salt in the ocean is partially phosphorus, so it's also percolating in our water cycle. And water is basically in everything, so we're ingesting a lot of phosphorus, which is sort of a rock. And then people develop a need for like a drug like uh, sedatives which do have phosphorus in them and it's not really good to take that because it causes a hardening because it's a rock and then your body is taking in rock which is sort of below the ground so um, when people study warming of the planet and and things like that they in the ocean problem with pollution they have to consider that there is something in the salt that's wrong in the ocean. We're really supposed to be more called salinity, which is a sort of a silken kind of, um, or an, uh, it's just a different type of uh, aquatic environment. And then there's supposed to be fresh water, which is more alkaline. And um, there's very little alkaline. And there's so much pollution from human waste and there has to be a process 
through heating and cooling and turning water and and um really the water that goes through our toilets and our sewers should be considered separate from the water cycle of the planet and when we think of our water cycle when you read about it they say it takes a thousand years for the water cycle to go through one complete uh, renaissance where you consider the rainfall and the lakes and the streams and the oceans and the seas to, to turn, go through the, as the earth turns, the water goes through the turning with the earth and goes through pathways and cleanses out in a natural pattern. But when there's so much human waste in it, it can't, and what people have to really do is separate our toilet and sewer systems from the earth water system. Just because there's water in the toilet and the faucets, it has to be an enclosed system, say, under the house, maybe like a big pipe, I see, like a white kind of enamel or some kind of um, maybe fiberglass pipe system, maybe under people's homes. I went and separated from the water that is part of the water cycle, that is part of the water of the earth that grows our food and grows trees and brings rain and people should keep the water that's part of the each home's toilet system separate from the water cycle because if our wa toilet systems are part of the water cycle it's intermingling human waste and we don't want to drink water with human waste in it that's uh why we we basically get ill and um Per, uh, personally, I know that if people did not eat meat, it would take a huge, huge toll of the human waste um, pollution factor away because a lot of um, the human waste is filled with what we eat meat and we're not really supposed to eat meat. We're really not supposed to be carnivores, I don't think. If we ate vegetables like animals eat vegetables and fodder and fruit and they eat have droppings that go into the earth and from their droppings all kinds of things grow and it's clean they have a clean system but we are not a clean system because we eat meat and the meat then does not really break down the way that when an animal eat nuts and fruit it breaks down and comes into the earth and can easily regenerate more life our waste is not really acceptable and cannot generate anything but but just death. So it's important to separate the toilet systems in some kind of enclosed system that then has some kind of treatment that usually through heating and cooling can separate out ingredients and um, and then there become certain crystal and rock and then they go back into the earth. But people really have to stop eating things that then go um, into even the water system that eventually still has to be cleaned um, and that will come back to the earth um, and they have to consider that they should really start analyzing the things that are in our ocean every they should take samples of parts of the ocean at certain levels certain depths certain heights certain latitudes and longitudes certain areas of warmth and cold and analyze as much of the water in the ocean and the lakes as possible and see exactly what chemicals are in there and then isolate what is say human waste from what might be um maybe something that's out of alignment um from whatever reason. There are many reasons when you read Earth history that our water system could be out of alignment uh, for other reasons that uh, go way back. But the main problem is what humans do in the water and they. I think you, the separation has to take place between what human waste water is and just water cycling in general. And people have to um, really think about it and people who know physics and science should really think about how to analyze every particle in different parts of the ocean say and then uh, know how to process it or through heating and cooling and, and turning uh, there are processes um, to clean and sterilize water and they have to do it and sterilize it. And then some of it becomes crystallines and rocks and mica and things that then go back to the earth. But I still think that even 
in the long term, that is not a probable solution if people keep eating meat. I uh, hope that helps in the long term.